I want to make a copy of my project so that I can explore the different features of Cordova. So all you simply need to do, let's go back to your flash drive. I'm looking in my apps folder. I've got a folder called basic. I want to right click basic and select copy. And then right click the empty spot and click paste. So this is going to make an exact copy of our project, which is good and bad. It's good because this is so fast. I don't need to do Cordova create project again. I don't need to do Cordova add platform again. I don't need to do Cordova add plugins again and Cordova build and all of that stuff. I don't need to do that. It's been done. All of that's been saved in that folder. What I do need to do, one downside, is I need to go back to the config XML file and make some changes there because now I have two apps called exactly the same thing, basic. Even if we rename this particular folder to be called My Amazing App, it still internally is called basic because the config XML file has not been changed. As soon as this finishes copying, then we will rename the folder. We're still kind of learning and, and testing this, so we'll call it test. We'll go in, we'll change the config file a little bit, and then we'll start to play with all these great features. Taking photos, making a sound, vibration, all of that. Once we have that under our belt, okay, then we're going to get into the part, let's take that app we made last month. Let's take that website that we made last month and make it an app, finally. But first, let's get a little bit under our belts how this whole Cordova thing works in 10 seconds in five seconds. Okay, I've got a copy. Hopefully you do too. I've got a copy of my project. I'm going to rename that to test because I, I'm going to need to type basic-copy in, in, in command prompt to make it easier on ourselves then. Rename that folder, just call it test. So basic is my template, and test is something that I'm just going to play with and delete later, maybe. It's not going to do that much, but it's great for me to understand how Cordova works. Open your test folder. Let's edit the config file. Right-click right -click config.xml, edit with notepad. So again, perfect copy. Line 2. This is no longer our com.campos.basic app. This is our com.campos test app. Version number I can leave alone. Uh, Android version code I can leave alone. On number three, it's no longer my basic app. I'm just going to call it test. That's the text that appears below my icon. Description. Let's just write um, testing features of Cordova. The author is still the same and everything else is still the same. Save that. Brand new app. The end. That's it. It's changing those, those few lines right there. We've got a brand new app. We don't have to do that Cordova build, etc., etc. I mean Cordova create and Cordova add platform. Okay. Um, I'm going to save that config file. Make sure you save that. I'm going to go back to my flash drive. Back to the test folder. All the work that we're going to do for our app is going to be in the www folder. These other folders have purposes, 
but you don't really need to get into them except for advanced stuff. We'll be able to do everything that we want basically in the WW folders. Open that folder. You've got index, HTML, and an images folder, a CSS folder, JavaScript folder. We saw this before. We're going to do a couple of things here. Um, We kind of just want a kind of a blank slate to work with so that we can focus on on um, we want to focus on just this Cordova stuff. So let's do it like this. Let's um, I know we've got a folder structure, but we're gonna ignore it for the moment. Just right click on the empty spot of uh, index where you've got index, just right click select new text document and let's call this um, my javascript js yes we are gonna rename it from a text file to a javascript file it will complain go ahead and say yes rename that so what I'm just trying to do here is I've got my index file and I'm gonna write some brand new JavaScript I'm gonna ignore the JavaScript file that's already part of our project because it's gonna be a little bit more complex than I want to deal with at this point so our brand new code will go inside of that my javascript.js for both of these files let's edit them in notepad the trick is you can select them both right click edit notepad I'm going to close some of these other windows that are in my way. I just, at the moment, just want to deal with index.html and my javascript.js. There's a bunch of stuff that's already here. Again, I kind of want a blank slate. So what we'll do is. Lines 39 to 45 have the old Apache Cordova icon. I want to remove all of that. I want sort of just a, an empty body. So remove that whole div. Line 41 has a reference to the old JavaScript file. Let's change that source which is my JavaScript I didn't put it inside of that JS folder so therefore I didn't add the JS folder name at the beginning <coughs> and then also the Line 35 includes a reference to the old CSS file. Again, I just kind of want a blank slate, so I, I don't want to delete that line of HTML code. I just want to comment it. Does anyone remember the comment tag? Angle, <clears throat> angle bracket, exclamation point, dash, dash. And then at the end of the line, dash, dash, angle bracket. So just comment outline. 35. Put your co your HTML comment tags. We might use it later. For the moment, we've just deactivated it. So angle bracket exclamation dash dash, and then at the end dash dash angle bracket.
in the body, let's just write a simple heading tag, my app, my test app. Just something to look at. To, to confirm, hopefully we haven't broken too much. Let's save it and then let's let's emulate it or or run it. I'm gonna emulate it in my device. Got one thing, right? Wrong directory. I'm still in my basic project, therefore it still loaded the old project. Even though in Notepad I was working on my new project, I never told that in the command prompt. Whoops. Okay, we need to navigate over to our test project. We're inside of a folder and I want to exit the folder to the previous one. What was that command again? CD dot dot. So we'll go to the previous folder. So we're going to exit the basic folder, cd dot dot. DIR, just to orient yourself if you want. DIR shows, okay, there's my test folder. cd test. Now I'm in the test folder, and now I'll emulate it or run it. So. It's easy to forget, that's why we have the command prompt, and um, I'm in the test project, and now I will emulate it. What I like to do is, before that runs there, I mean as it runs, what I like to do is I like to go to the home screen of my device or emulator so that I know what displays as the latest version. Sometimes I forget. I'm still running my current version of the app and then I do emulate and then it and then it launches but then I forgot did I actually launch it or is it still my last version and that sort of thing so I like to go back home so I'm on my home screen here also and then run it and uh, then the latest version should show up So my goal here is that this uh, pretty empty app will show up. It's a skeleton. Uh, and we're going to head over to the Apache um, documentation, the Cordova Apache documentation. And I want to explore some of, the, some of the things that I can do with Cordova. We're going to be working with the different um, plugins. Remember, we've activated those plugins. Vibration, network connection, um, camera etc so we'll play with we'll play with some of those in just a moment We've still got that basic splash screen. We'll deal with that later. There it is, my test app. Okay, so anticlimactic, but I'm just checking here that it's very basic. Okay. I'm going to open my web browser, and let's go to uh, uh, cordova.apache.org. Cordova.apache.org. Hmm. 
Once we're on the site here, then click at the top, Documentation. On the left side are a bunch of chapters and such. Let's take a quick look at the, the chapter called the config XML file. I told you in my handout some recommendations and we did it together, but if you want to further explore, go to the config XML file chapter right there, and it goes on into much more detail. It also mentions some examples of what can be uh, configured. Notice it goes into a much more technical explanation where I said, well, we've got preferences and so forth, and this tells you exactly what that is. And then adding versions here, it's mentioning what you do if, you, if you're targeting a, uh, also an Android, uh, an Android version. So you notice you've got widget ID, you've got version, which is arbitrary, you've got Android version code, which we did, and then we've got iOS-CF bundle version, and then their version number there. So all the information will be listed in the documentation. Global preferences, multi-platform, there's how to add a background color so that your app has a default color no matter what from screen to screen. You might notice as in jQuery mobile when we switch, switch from one screen to another there might be a color behind everything. This is one place to edit that. So if we added preference name, background color, and added a hexadecimal value with alpha, then we would have a brand new color back there. This applies to Android and Blackberry. Hide keyboard from act form access. There's orientation. We've got other features. So, okay, that's informational for the moment. Um, let's go look at, we'll do this one in more detail next time, but let's look at icons and splash screens. So we've got a splash screen that was loading up here. That Cordova icon was still loading up. This is the documentation in here on how to add your own splash screens. We'll do it together. It's not complicated. It's kind of, it's kind of annoying the first time you do it, but you know, we're going to add different versions of our splash screen for the different versions of the monitor sizes. And that would require a little bit of graphical know-how. We'll, we'll go into Photoshop a little bit, make some splash screens, add them to our project, and that'll be customized instead of having that Cordova splash screen. We'll also then a little later talk about adding icons. Uh, right now the app icon is the default Cordova, the little Cordova mascot. I want my own icon there. We'll be able to do that. Also, side note, Basic app is still listed. Test is listed because they're two separate apps. They've got two unique app IDs, package names, so they're two apps. So we'll deal with uh, icons and splash screens later. What we want to look at right now is one more. API reference. Let's look at events. Events. Event types. There's a few listed here. Device ready. This is one of the first ones that fires, one of the first ones that, that activates. You launch your app internally. Your app is then going to broadcast the event. Device ready and then we will be able to use the features of the device. If we try to use the camera before device ready happens, we'll get problems and errors. So we're going to set some JavaScript that we won't be able to use any of this Cordova stuff until device is ready. Other things, other events that could happen are pause and resume. We saw that in the monitor dot bat. When I went back to my home screen, the event pause fired. We could capture that with JavaScript. We can be looking out for that event. If the pause event happens, do this. Maybe play a sound. Then when you come back to an app that's been paused, you have resume. So the resume event would fire. With JavaScript we could capture that or listen for it. And if we get resume, something else happens. Maybe play a loading animation or something. We have a back button on, 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 on 
all these devices. What if someone presses the back button? We could we could wait for that event, we can listen for that event and do something about it when someone presses the button. When someone presses the menu button, when someone presses the search button, which some uh, devices don't have anymore. And then we've got uh, volume up, volume down. We could override that. If someone presses the volume up, maybe we can make something happen on screen instead of the normal behavior. Maybe you're gonna get a call. Well, the event start call if someone presses answer the call, start call happens. When someone ends the call, end call event happens. So these are all events that could happen during the life cycle of our app, and we can do different things in that case. There's also, for example, regarding battery. Let's say the, the battery low event fires, so therefore your app deactivates the video features. Let's say we also check, is there a network connection? If the, if the event is offline, then we cannot play any of our videos. So then don't display any of the videos or make a pop-up that says, please connect to a network. So notice the, the way this will work. We're going to add this line, actually, um, a version of it eventually, to our JavaScript file. <coughs> notice the way it's set up. Document dot Add event listener, notice the capital letters, parentheses, which event? Well, we've got these events to choose from, pause, resume, blah, blah, blah. The very first one we should check for is device ready. If device ready fires, if, if it does happen, then we've got a callback function. This is a function, even though we don't see the parentheses. It's just the way that it's written. Run the function, your callback function. And then the false at the end is, I believe, it ignores uh, default behavior. Um, so again, this is very important. It looks a little dry, but uh, this is how we'll be able to handle all of these options, all of these events that might happen. Let's go over now, finally, to the plugin APIs. Here's the documentation for how to do all of this stuff, how to work with the camera and such. That's a little more complex. We'll do that very soon. The first one I want to work with is dialogues. We have the very basic JavaScript command. Remember, alert, and then some message, hello. Very basic. But that's more of a JavaScript alert rather than a native alert, meaning it doesn't look like it's part of the operating system. It looks like a web browser alert. It doesn't look like your Android OS alert box. We've got one that looks and works better than that under Dialogs. So we've got Visual Device Notifications. Click on Dialogs, and then this will tell us all the details on how to create real dialog boxes, pop-up boxes. It takes us over to npmjs.com. Private npm is here. Great. Scroll down. Okay, so here's the all this all the documentation. Cordova-plugin.dialogs. This is the notification plugin. This plugin provides access to some native dialog user interface elements via a global navigator.notification object. Although the object is attached to the global, it is not available until after device ready. So, for example, here, document.addEventListener, device ready event, callback function on device ready. On device ready is defined right here. A simple console log to say that yes, we have the ability to do notifications. How to install it? We've already installed it. Cordova plugin add Cordova plugin dialogs. The specific methods or commands are navigator.notification.alert.confirm.prompt.beep. We can make it play a sound, an error sound. And then it goes on into detail. Okay, navigator.notificationalert. Show a custom alert or dialog box. Most Cordova implementations use a native box. 
but some use the browser's alert function, which is typically less customizable. Okay, so this works with navigator, dot notification, dot alert, parentheses, whatever message, the name of your callback, and then some options. The, the text of the title of the box, and maybe the, um, the name of the button itself. Instead of just saying OK, it could say, you could say got it. The message is what appears on screen. So this breaks it down exactly how this command works, this method. And it gives a fully functional example. Okay, let's actually do this. So we need to do a couple of things. I'm going to back up near the top, the very first bit of code. Let's copy that completely. Let's copy the first part here about document.adam and let's copy the whole thing. Copy that. And then in Notepad, let's go to our JavaScript file and paste it. Oftentimes, this is the very first thing that we'll have on any of our projects because none of that Cordova stuff will work until our device is ready. So we're checking, is the device ready? And then we can do any Cordova thing we want. Okay, so that's one part. Let's go back to the documentation and then let's copy... There'll be a part that says example. Let's copy that whole part. Let's copy that, and then in Notepad, let's paste it at the end, and let's look what we've got. We've got the device, we've got the event listener waiting for device ready. Once it's ready, launch on device ready function. On device ready function is defined there, it just writes something that, to the console. That's not complete yet. Here then we've got, okay, navigator.notification.alert. It's going to make a pop-up box that says, you are the winner. And then after someone clicks OK, the callback function alert dismissed will launch, which is defined here, alert dismissed. doesn't do anything. The, the box at the top will say game over. And then the button itself will say done instead of OK. There's that. Now, this is not, not going to do anything until or this should not this should not run until device ready so actually let's move this so you can select it and then simply drag it into the on device ready move it completely make sure you've moved it with its with its uh, parentheses and semicolon there i did not move the function uh, no, actually, I do want to move that too. Sorry, you want to move both. There's several ways to do this, but let's just try it this way first. Move all of that into the on device ready function. So no, so now this stuff will not uh, work until there's a ready device. I'm going to save that, go ahead and emulate it or run it. Let's see what happens. We're going to customize it of course, but let's just see what happens at this point. Like I said, I like to put my uh, my device back to home. But here's what we've got here. So in theory, what should happen is we get a pop-up box that says, you're the winner, as soon as the app loads, as soon as it's ready, actually. Because we've got device ready, we're waiting for that.
All right, so if you paid close attention, we had a splash screen for a moment, then we had the dialog box, then we had the text, my test app, and it popped up, game over, you are the winner, done. And then it's the first screen. So obviously, proof of concept. This doesn't really do that anything that interesting, but it's a proof of concept. Raise your hand if that worked. Okay. Um, if it didn't, you want to confirm that you've copied and pasted the code and that you've pasted the actual alert code into the device ready. So this happened as soon as, as the device was ready, as soon as the uh, Cordova was ready. Uh, you could also try this out on your real device. Cordova run Android. I'm going to let that go in the background. But okay, that seemed to work. If it didn't for yours, we're going to have lab time soon. But that was a, that was a pop-up box. I'm going to couple this with with um, another type of alert uh, with beep. I want that when this uh, when it says game over and then I click done then it plays a sound. One way to accomplish it is notice what's built into alert. Here's the text. After a person clicks done we can launch another function. There's another function there as a skeleton. It's not doing anything at that point. Oh, here's my thing finally loading up. There we go. So it does load up also on my device. <coughs> so I'm going to scroll down. Oh, I can jump down to beep. Scroll all the way down. Navigate, navigate notification.beep. The device plays a beep sound. The way this works is navigator.notification.beep, parentheses, and then the number of times to beep. And this is a number. This is a whole number. You can't put 1.5. It's not going to be one and a half beeps. It's going to be one beep or two beeps or 20 beeps. Example, simply navigator.notification.beep2. I'm going to copy that. in notepad here, I'm going to paste that into line 5. I'm going to paste it into my alert dismissed. So you see, I'm going to get that pop-up again, which I haven't customized yet. When the person clicks done, it will invoke alert dismissed, and alert dismissed will just beep twice. Save that and run it. turning up the volume of my device just so that we can hear it. Three beeps. Did you change it to three? <laughs> okay, here it comes almost. It's on my device. I get the game over pop up. I'm going to click done. There we go. My two sounds. And I'm hearing a few other sounds also. So um, I've tied two things together then. I've tied the dialog box and I've tied that beep. The beep is going to be your default sound. So someone's sound might be something else, yours might be something else, but it's tapping into something of the device. This would not work on a web page, but this is still plain old JavaScript. And the reason this is working is we've, because we've got this whole Cordova project. That was that 
Cordova Create Project and Cordova Ad Platform or Cordova Platform Ad. So we're able to use plain old JavaScript, relatively simple commands, and then this, if we did Cordova Build Android, then gets translated to Android. Cordova Build iOS, then it gets translated for iPhone with the same JavaScript code. And now we have a musical classroom. All of this Cordova documentation will follow the same sort of structure. There will be the, the different methods, which are the commands. There will be the different methods and examples, and maybe if there are options, they will be explained. The times option is the number of times to repeat the beep. There will be an example, sometimes complex, sometimes relatively simple. Which platforms does this work on? This works basically on all of them. It will work on Android, iOS, Windows, Phone, Blackberry, etc. But there's some quirks on Amazon Fire OS and on Android. Android plays the default Android plays the default notification ringtone specified under setting sound and display. So it's the person's tone that they set up, not the one that you want. If we want to play the sound that we want, there's another method for that. This one is just tapping into the person's built-in notification tone. Windows 7 and 8 relies on generic beep file from the Cordova distribution. T's and quirks and so forth. Okay, so We've, we're getting something. Let's uh, let's kick it up a notch. Let's uh, let's say let's take a photo. Let's make our project take a, an actual photo. This will obviously work best with a real device. With an emulated device, it'll still work, but uh, it'll it won't be as impressive. So let's set ourselves up a little bit. Back to Notepad. Let's comment out the code that was doing this whole alert stuff, which is line, which are lines four to thirteen or so. I'm going to comment all of that out. This is a um, JavaScript file, so we'll comment with JavaScript comments, which is slash asterisk, and then we end the comment asterisk slash. So all of that's been deactivated. No more pop-up. We'll go back to Cordova website and let's look at, uh, so let's go back, let's look at the camera documentation. So this is the Cordova camera plugin. This plugin defines a global navigator.camera object. And uh, you get this very quick basic thing again. Scrolling down, how do you install it? We've got that API. Um, so basically this is uh, going to be navigator.camera.getPicture. And then we've got a couple, oh, we've got three uh, parameters, success, fail, and options. Scrolling down a little bit more, it goes into detail. Okay, navigator.camera.getPicture, camera success, camera error, camera options. These values here could be anything we want, because up here it mentions it as success, fail, and options. And here it note mentions it as camera success, camera error, camera options. So these are, are uh, callback functions. These are resultant functions. We can take a photo and either the, the picture capture will work or it will not. So we have a way to define what happens if we did properly take a photo and what happens if we didn't take a photo and options that we could add optionally. The description goes on to explain that we can capture a photo from the camera sensor 
or we can load a photo from the person's camera roll. So there's a lot of explanation and then of course um, documentation. Notice how this one's longer than the other one. So it says a return value is sent to the camera success callback and it's one of the following formats depending on the camera option. So it's either it's either the data of the of the picture or the location on the person's memory card or camera roll. And then it says you can do whatever you want with that with that data then. You can display it on screen with an image tag and the example down here will show us. You can save it um, you can save it in a local storage object. You can save it in something called lawn chair, which is to save more complex data. You can also save it into the person's um, memory card. You can save that data to a remote server. This works on all the platforms, basically. Here's an example, a folder example. We'll copy and paste this one in a moment. But uh, let me break it down a little bit. Navigator.camera.getPicture on success function, on fail function, and then a list of options in JSON format, which is just values, key value pairs. So if we are able to take the photo successfully, let's run the on success function. Notice it's not calling it consistently. That may be confusing, but it's telling you these values can be anything you want. Here it called it unsuccess on success. Up here it called it camera success. And up here it called it simply success. So again, those values can be anything you want because these are functions that you will be creating, you will be inventing. They are not built-in JavaScript functions. So if there is a successful camera capture, here's that definition of that function on success. What happens by default is some data will be the result of successfully taking the photo. There's some data, which is defined right here, image data. This is basically being shown on screen, image.source. Show the picture on screen. Show the image data on screen. Well, the other possibility would be that there's a fail. As in, I'm trying to take the photo and then it crashes or something. I'm trying to take the photo, I cancel. I'm trying to load a photo and I cancel. That's a fail. So on fail is right here, defined as function on fail. It's taking the data, the message coming from the failure, and it's just making a simple pop-up box that says failed because and whatever the message is. And that's what basically the device is going to spit back. It's going to say, could not load photo, corrupted photo, corrupted camera sensor, something. It's going to display it on screen. And then lastly, a set of, of options. And what I'm saying is in JSON format in that it uses a key and a value. Quality colon 50, comma, destination type colon data. Uh, so we can have many types of parameters and we're listing the different parameters in that format with those curly braces. And we're saying there's this particular option, quality, and it has a value, 50, 75, 100, 12, the quality of our photo. In the documentation, of course, it'll tell us what are all the possible options. But here's two examples. And one of them is, well, the destination of that photo um, where it came from is the data of the photo. Very similar here. This is loading a, loading a picture from the person's camera. All of this looks almost exactly the same except for the option right here. Destination type, camera.destinationType.file instead of the data coming from the from the image sensor. And then some quirks and other examples. Camera options. These are some things we can do. We can work with quality, 
destination type source, allow edit, other things that I'll explain, we can feed in the photo at a certain width and height. Save to the photo album, false. That picture will not get saved to the person's camera memory card. So we'll actually try this. Uh, let's copy the code of the first example. I want to take a photo and show it on screen. Now, honestly, all, this is all the documentation. It's very, it's very complete, but it's it's kind of written technically for technical people, and as beginners, could be a little bit complicated. The cool thing about this is that since a lot of this is open source and such, you can become a contributor. You can, uh, you know volunteer your services to write this documentation easier for the layman. You're able to do that. That's the great thing about open source. So if this documentation is useful but you think for the next generation, how can I help them? You can contribute to the project and make this documentation better, like Wikipedia. Anyway, let's copy that. Back to Notepad. We'll do this slightly differently this time. Instead of it automatically, like on our previous one here, it just happened, I want someone to click a button that says take a photo and then I want to take a photo so we'll do it this way uh, we will go outside of the on device ready function so after line 14 somewhere paste all of that code this navigator.camera get picture will not run without some sort of trigger. So actually what I want to do is wrap this inside of a function so I can call it via a button press in my app. So before that navigator.camera, let's write function take photo open close parentheses, curly brace, and I need to close that curly brace after that semicolon. And then I'll tab that stuff there so that it looks readable. So I, I've added function, created a brand new function called take photo, parentheses, curly braces, and then that part about navigator.camera is in there. So it will not automatically suddenly load the camera until someone clicks a button and then it will take a photo. And then we've got this on success and on fail. Reading ahead also a little bit to, to display it on screen. It doesn't just happen automatically. None of this stuff happens automatically. So, reading a little bit more here, the example shows it's then going to look for an ID on screen in the HTML file called my image. It's going to look for an, a my image div, basically, and store it as a reference called image. Um, and then the, the actual picture, the source, is going to be the data that we've captured as a JPEG display on the screen. So what we need to do is now we need to go to the HTML file, create a button to take the photo, and create this placeholder to display this picture. It wants to display the picture in this placeholder called my image, but there's no placeholder called my image in the HTML file. So actually I'm gonna put these side by side. Remember the trick. You can right click the the tab and select uh, move to other view. So right click your JavaScript tab, move to other view. I want to see both the HTML and the JavaScript at the same time. And what I want is to make a simple button and then a placeholder. So after line 39, now we don't even have jQuery mobile set up here so it's not going to work to do the trick we've done previously of, um, remember, we can upgrade a, a link to be a button. 
one quick workaround is we have a tag called button. So that's going to create a button, which we will add the text, um, take a photo. And what I want is when that button is pressed, to run the take photo function. So we've been we've seen this previously in the last class when we want to run a JavaScript function from a button or a link inside of the button tag. We'll have on click equals quotes the name of the function that we created in the JavaScript file. Take photo. Parentheses semicolon. So that's a button. Once it's pressed on click, it'll run take photo. It'll then go through the process of capturing a photo. Now we need the placeholder. The image tag. Um, with the ID of my image. An image needs a source, but we won't put any source. We don't have a picture yet. It's a placeholder. So I believe that's all we need at this point. Let's save both files, the HTML and the JavaScript. Run it. Again, the better experience will happen on, on a real device, but it should still work on a virtual device. Let me show you a trick here. I want to run this both on my virtual device and my real device. If I run Cordova run Android, I have to wait for it to be done, and then I can type Cordova emulate Android. Well, I can do both at the same time. Cordova run Android space ampersand ampersand space Cordova emulate Android. So it'll first run on my real device, and then it'll run, and that's all done, then it'll run on my emulator. Obviously, I've got both, so I can do this. But if you've only got a real device, and you also emulate Android, I think it's going to want to force a new emulator to run um, first. So two ampersand symbols there. Two and signs. No space between the ampersands. Oops, I haven't saved my JavaScript. So... Actually, I'm going to cancel this. I haven't mentioned this. Control C. Control C for cancel. Terminate batch job? Yes. I forgot to save my JavaScript. So I Control C to cancel. Press yes to confirm. And I'll save my JavaScript. And my index. Save all. Try that again. So sometimes I've noticed with, with people you're trying to run or emulate and it seems to freeze. What do you do? Control C should cancel your last command. So, <clears throat> almost. Okay, so that's coming up on my real device. I get my splash screen, my test app, very basic button that says take photo. I'm going to press take photo.
I'm also going to load this on my emulator just to confirm. Sometimes what happens is um, when I've got my device plugged in, it overrides the memory card and therefore I can't take a photo. But that's why I'm also running it in my emulator. Let's see what it does. Mine isn't really doing anything, unfortunately, but let me check it in the emulator. Did that work for anyone? <laughs> Let's see. Let me just confirm something here. I'm changing this slightly. I'm not getting any response from that button. I'm going to do it slightly differently. So just talking it out logically, what I've got is a link on click take photo function we have my JavaScript we know that works because we had the pop-up happen the function is called take photo and we're invoking it from the on click spelled exactly the same take photo open close parentheses inside of take photo we've got the method navigator dot get picture so Let's That didn't do it either. This is going to need a little bit more testing. I Possibly I'm missing something obvious. Um, and so we might have to end in a slightly anticlimactic note. Let's see any quirks here. Android uses intense to launch the camera. No, that's fine. <coughs> so we we got the other Cordova things working, those alerts and the sound and such, and the camera, well, obviously this is the most impressive one to to show off, but for some reason it doesn't want to work. So 
So um, we're pretty much running into the lab time now. So yeah, we're going to have to end a little bit anticlimactically. Uh, we're going to have to imagine that we were able to take a photo. So this does work. I'm going to have to double check what might be wrong. And uh, we'll, we'll do it next time. But when we come back next time, we're going to keep looking at some of these Cordova features like vibration and in-app browser and other cool stuff. And then we're going to start to then incorporate this stuff to our app. So kind of think about these are the different features that we can accomplish with Cordova. Right? We can use camera, we can do network stuff, acceleration, dialogues, geolocation, media, we can do that stuff. How can I incorporate those things to an app? So uh, we're going to end the main lecture at this point, have a little lab time, and when we come back we'll, uh, we'll keep working. This, this project that we're working on right now, it should be on your flash drive, so you can take it with you and we'll keep working with it next time. I'll put a copy of mine if you'd like on the network, although you know part of it is not quite working, but I'll put it into the network with my name and the date and you can get a copy of it if you'd like. Any general questions? Yes? No. Any general Sorry. questions? Later. <laughs> okay. So we'll do some lab time and um, we'll do it again next time. Yeah.